SpaceX, Starbase, Cape Canaveral. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in to episode 91 of Lab Padre's SpaceX and Starbase weekly updates. Now let's dig in. The nose cone that would have gone on Ship 33 was scrapped on Friday. Ship 33 was going to be built as a version 1 starship, but Elon Musk has now confirmed that Ship 32 is the last of the version 1 ships. At the Sanchez site, work is well underway on the construction of the third of the new booster engine installation stands. Once completed, this stand is expected to join the other two in the back of Mega Bay 1. This will create a row of three engine installation stands across the back of the building with Raptors being supplied from the addition that was constructed at the rear of the massive bay. In the crowded high bay, crews were spotted working to complete Ship 28's heat shield Suspected to be the next Starship to fly, SpaceX is likely planning to get the vehicle flight ready prior to its rollout to the launch site for pre-launch testing. A large pipe section was delivered to the orbital tank farm on Monday. Workers are reconfiguring the propellant storage system to include the new hot dog horizontal tanks and are believed to be planning to replace the vertical tanks in the long run. The first of the new replacement propellant tanks arrived about an hour after the pipe section, rolling down Highway 4 to the launch site on a specialized transporter trailer. Once the tank arrived, it was swapped to a specialized transport and then driven between the prepared foundation supports. Nine new tanks are expected at the launch site in all. Booster 11's second CO2 tank was raised vertical for installation as new boosters continue to be built and prepared for future flights in 2024. At Sanchez, construction of a fairly substantial new building continues. Early in the week, scaffolding and concrete formwork were seen for an apparent second floor. By later in the week, the formwork was gone, leaving behind the freshly poured concrete walls. It's not yet known what purpose this new facility will serve. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Glaciers have begun installation of the glass that will enclose the upper floor of Mega Bay 2. The expansive upper floor is expected to be an office space. By Tuesday, Workers look to be wrapping up the installation of heat shield tiles over the bands where Ship 28's section were welded together, moving the ship one step closer to its upcoming test campaign. Throughout the week, at the gate to the test stand tank farm and new parking lot, concrete carpenters continue to make progress on the ends of the walls and the large beam that will span the entrance connecting them. Lettering for a new sign arrived at the launch complex on Tuesday ahead of its installation on the curved wall facing Highway 4. A second new cryo tank was delivered to the launch site. A couple of hours later, it was parked next to the first tank on the concrete support stands. Crews began installing the new sign in the afternoon, hanging each letter over the curved, painted concrete wall near Highway 4. All throughout the week, crews were hard at work on the plumbing at the orbital tank farm. Old sections of piping have been removed and the new sections are going in. The staging area in front of the new fabrication building on the corner of San Martin Boulevard has been completely emptied and all the piping and accessories have been brought to the launch site for installation. The third new cryo tank was delivered to the launch site, repeating the process of the prior two tanks. Meanwhile, installation of the new sign continued, with the letter S joining the initial R of Mars. The booster stabilization pins, which help to locate the booster onto the clamps when it's mounted onto the launch table, were brought to the launch complex for installation on the orbital launch mount. Back at the build site, a construction accident occurred. One of the columns for the assembly hall tipped over, likely breaking the anchor bolts as it fell to the ground. Ship 33's aft section was brought out of Tent 3 and taken to Sanchez, where it is likely to be scrapped in the near future. At Massey's, crews continue to make steady progress on the new warehouse and office building. Also of note, Massey's was closed one night during the week for testing. While nothing was visible due to darkness, afterwards a buckled weld was observed on the S24.2 payload bay test article in the structural test stand. It is not known if this was a test failure or an unexpected failure of the article. 
At Mega Bay 1, preparation continues ahead of the expected installation of a massive door for the building. Welders were spotted working on the new steel door tracks along the side of the doorway. Up above, some of the exterior cladding has been removed, likely to allow for installation of either additional steel or the door itself. The fourth letter of the launch complex signage was installed on Wednesday, completing the word Mars. Meanwhile, the fourth cryogenic tank was spotted entering Starbase on the final leg of its journey to the launch complex. The procedures for the fourth tank were largely the same as the first three. This tank, however, was not placed right next to the previous one, but rather left at one tank wide gap as the four set of foundations are a slightly different configuration indicating a different tank will probably go there. Having spent the past two weeks on the ground for the launch of IFT-2, SpaceX's LR-11000 was raised and ready to resume operations at the launch site. Over at the launch pad, the booster stabilization pins were reinstalled onto the orbital launch mount. Given the pace of pad operations, we could soon see Booster 10 at the launch site in the near future. The fifth cryotank followed the same procedures as the previous deliveries, and the new cryotank was placed next to Tank 4. A traffic cone was caught under the wheels of an SUV and needed to be rescued from the road. Fortunately, I was on site to save the day. The SpaceX self-propelled modular transporter that placed the cryotanks onto their stands departed the launch complex early on a rainy Thursday morning. Over at the build site, some of the steel that had been erected for the Star Factory expansions was taken back down following the accident earlier in the week. Several pipe supporting steel stands have been placed at the launch site to carry the plumbing for the newly added cryotanks. Installation of the new sign continued outside the launch complex and the sign was one letter away from completion before noon. Crews began washing down the rest of the bare concrete wall, possibly in preparation for paint, as the sign crews brought in the final letter for the Gateway to Mars signage outside the launch complex. Finally, by that afternoon, the last letter was lifted and installed, completing the message that Starbase really is the gateway to Mars. Shortly after sunset, workers were seen investigating the new sign and scanning over the letters with flashlights. Over at Port Canaveral, Crosby Skipper returned to port following the Starlink Group 6-29 launch with a short follow gravitas and Falcon 9 Booster 1067 on Friday. That same evening, Crosby Skipper towed just read the instructions out to sea in support of the Starlink Group 6-30 mission. Saturday saw Falcon 9 Booster 1069 laid onto the transporter at the docks for its return to Roberts Road to be refurbished. SpaceX support ship Bob left Port Canaveral to support the Starlink Group 6-30 mission ahead of the Falcon 9 scheduled Monday night launch. After undergoing repairs at Dry Dock in Charleston, SpaceX support ship Doug returned to Port Canaveral on Sunday evening. A large assembly of bright blue, orange, and yellow equipment, currently believed to be for Blue Origin, arrived in Port Canaveral on Monday. Once the equipment was hooked up to a heavy lift crawler crane, it was hoisted off the barge and placed on the Port Canaveral docks. Falcon 9 Booster 1062 successfully lifted off on schedule for its 17th mission, launching Starlink Group 6-30 and its 23 satellites into orbit. Crews were performing Dragon Capsule Recovery Training on Tuesday, instructing personnel in post-splashdown operations with a mock-up spacecraft before returning to the docks. Signet Titan towed a short fall of Gravitas out to sea on Tuesday in support of the Starlink Group 6-31 mission scheduled for a Friday launch. Falcon 9 Booster 1067 finished its dockside tenure and was laid onto the horizontal transporter for its return to Roberts Road for refurbishment. Bob returned to Port Canaveral with both fairing halves from the Starlink Group 6-30 mission that afternoon. Crosby Skipper and Just Read the Instructions made it back to port with Falcon 9 Booster 1062 on Thursday. The Falcon 9 booster was lifted onto the dockside stand for stowage just a few hours after its return to port.
And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.